Today we're going to have a look at uh, preparing for a persuasive speech. There are a lot of things that we have to consider when we're going to um, present a persuasive speech and we know that the framework for our speech is that it's for three minutes and that the topic is that you have to talk about something that you feel strongly about. And um, so really what we need to do is come up with an interesting approach to this speech. It would be very easy to say, I'm going to do it on the environment or something to do with science or, you know, a big issue. But you've done that a thousand times in primary school and we certainly don't want a factual um, report or rec uh, like a, an account or a recount. So we have to be a bit clever about what we do. Quite frankly, in English, we're not really, um, we're not really interested about facts. Uh, it's, it's about how you communicate with us and so um, you have a bit of license to, um, to play around with things. And it's far better to do a speech like this on something that's interesting and topical rather than picking something that, you know, it's been done a thousand times before and you've done it in, in school before too. So creating your idea is a really important part of the process because the simple thing that most people will do is say, I'm doing it on this and not really think about it. And we want you to think about um, the, the options that you have because your first idea is most generally not your best idea. So, think about this. What's something that you're passionate about? You know, it doesn't have to, to um, be with what you're doing at school and studying, but it might be something outside school. And, and that can range from all sorts of things like, um, um, you know, um, your interests in music and art and things like that, to sport and to a whole range of things, to reading, to, to um, friendship groups and all that sort of stuff. So what's something you're passionate about? Or maybe what's something that's important to you? And um, that might be um, something on a, on a personal level ra or a social level rather than being something um, extreme like uh, you know, the politics of a, Australian society. And what we want you to do is think beyond the obvious. Okay, we want to get beyond that. So if we look over here, if we're saying, what's your passion? You say, well, I like food. That's my passion. Not only food, but I like cooking and I like, I like um, you know, the, the whole um, sort of process around that, the, you know, there's a lot of things to think about, isn't there? Like it's the, the planning and finding the recipes and getting all the right ingredients, maybe growing things. Um, and then the preparation and, you know, you might do that with, with a family member. Um, and then there's the, the actual eating of the food and, and there's all these things tied into that. So um, that's, that's the way that our, our thinking's got to be. You might say, I like music. And it might be a particular aspect of music and it might be listening to music or it might be playing, to mu playing a musical instrument. And, um, and so that involves a lot of components too. And there is a long journey behind that. And it might be so that, well, I think that um, every student in school or every child in Australia needs to learn a musical instrument and persuade your audience about that and come up with the reasons why. You know, there are lots of, lots of really compelling reasons for that. Um, you know, that's just an example for you. You might talk about charity work and say that, you know, that is something that's really important and it's important um, to the local community and it's important to the Australian society and it makes you feel really good too. So it's working on all these different levels. You might do something like saying, well, um, sharing time with grandparents is, is something that's really important and you could explore that. So these are the type of ideas that we want to work on. Um, we don't want to say, I want to save the environment. We need to stop pollution. They're, they're very important and, and very valid things to, be, to feel strongly about. But, um, you know, and, you know, you can go and do a speech like that, but picking something that that is a bit more personal, a bit more social. It's not bogged down with fact. It allows you to, to um, really tell a story and, and be involved that way is, is, a, is a better way. You're going you're gonna to enjoy doing it more and you're going to come up with a better product. Okay, once we've got our idea, and we've come up with lots of ideas and then we've picked our idea that we like, we'd move on to the purpose of, what, what's the purpose of this speech? Okay, and really what you're trying to do is get the audience, you're trying to persuade them to agree with your point of view, to believe you, to agree with you and say, yeah, I think that's a pretty valid 
uh, thing and and they you know in, in delivering your speech they might actually take ownership of your idea so you might say I think food's important and then the audience might say at the end yeah actually you know I hadn't really thought about that but I think it's important too and I you know I, I agree with everything you said I do the same okay so that's one purpose and it's up to you whether you want to at the end or not but you can have a call to action so it might be that you're looking not only to you know convince people but to actually ask them, you know, challenge them to do the same and and to actually do what you're doing or believe what you believe so have a, a bit of a call to action that's that's one of those things that um, you know you need something at the end of your speech to to um, sort of wrap it up and that's a nice way of doing it now what we need you to think about too is that um, you want to look at, and I was talking about this before, what, what's, what importance is your topic, what, what importance does it have to the individual, to you? Why is it important to you? And then how does it relate to the broader community? And we can define that in a whole range of ways. So it could be like a, a sporting community or a, a music community, there might be a music society, it might be the local area, like the central coast, or it might be broader and say like for all of Australians. Um, so we want to we want to look at that and say, okay, well, why is it important to you or to the community? And that's an opportunity for you to explore those ideas. And particularly when you get to the community section, um, that might be where you can demonstrate some research and, and you know have some factual evidence or some examples um, and, and some information in there that that's going to provide you with. Um, support for your logical argument. So I've got logos there, um, logic. You know that's going to give you some some um, logic there. You know you're providing a bit of evidence, and um, and so we've got to consider that we've got ideas, we've got purpose, we've got the individual and community, and then finally, um, what we have to really think about is is our planning, and so we have to think about two things: the what and the how. So first of all. What are you going to say? Okay, so here, here's my idea, and here are all the things that I'm going to talk about. And I might have four or five things lined up that, that you're going to explore. So obviously you have to have um, the ideas and the information, but then we have to look at the how. So that's really how you're going to shape your speech. And this is the, um, the, the thing that differentiates good students and excellent students. Good, excellent students are able to shape their speech using a whole range of devices um, that are go it's going to make the, the speech interesting to listen to. It's going to move it from being a factual um, you know, info dump to, to being a, um, uh, something that's really interesting to listen to uh, and um, you know, it's, it's going to be full of some nice things. Okay, so we'll, let's move on to the planning phase. Whoa! That fade was amazing. Okay, the planning phase. This is the really important part. And what we're going to do is use a visual organizer. And today what I'm using is a spidergram. And so if I draw a little picture of it here, basically you'll have an idea, a main idea, and then you might have a couple of ideas that come off that. And then off those ideas come other ideas. So they, the ideas keep growing. And so that's what I'm really... Um, presenting here. So we've got our main topic and then we've got our two ideas and then the, the ideas branch off from that. Um, and, and so this is a really good way of, of organising your ideas so that you know where you're going and, and then that way you can allocate once you have the what or things you want to talk about, you can start allocating the, um, the language devices, the features of language to, to your speech. Okay, so um, it is quite all right. Also, there are different ways to do it. You don't have to use this sort of spidergram, but I think it's really good. It, it works well, and that's the one I'm going to recommend. So we've got our central topic here: that food is an important part of our lives. Okay, and that's what I'm going to argue. I'll put there. Here's the topic. It's something that I really enjoy, and I'm going to persuade you that food is an important part of our lives. And so I've come up with two ideas. Firstly, that the idea one that cooking connects people. It's a social activity. You know, it's it's good for you know um, giving you nourishment and nutrients and all that sort of stuff. But it, it's a real social connector. So it's really good on that level. 
an idea to food is a vital part of our community. Okay, so we've got basically over here we're starting to look at the individual and over here we're looking at the broader community, so we're dividing it that way. Um, before I get to talk about that, let's talk about, um, um, well, making a, a, a metaphor. You want to try and see if you can say food is like something, you compare it to something. Now I said like, you know, when we talk about um, comparisons, if we use like or as, it's a simile. And if we use is, it's a metaphor. So a very easy way to make a metaphor is to make a simile and then take the like or as out. So you might say food is like super glue. And then just take the like out and say food is super glue. Because what it does is it, it makes us stick together. It's, you know, if we're talking about it being a, a social connector, um, then that's a nice way of thinking about it. The other thing I've got there is that I could say food is like a magnet, and it's like a magnet because it draws people to you. You know, like food is the thing that everyone flocks to. Okay, so that is my comparison. I want to change it into a metaphor, so food is a magnet. Okay, there are thousands of things that we can say. And you'll, you just have to think about it and say, well, what do I really want to say about food? What is it that, that's important about it? Ah, oh, it's, it's all about that community and that communal um, coming together and then, you know, um, you make it from there. So once you've got that, there is your main argument. This is the thing that's going to drive your speech and then these parts are the, the, um, the, the sort of the middle of the speech and the, um, the arguments that you're going to present. I'm going to just keep my piece of paper in my hand here. So we've got this idea here that... that um, Cooking connects people. It's a way of, of um, getting people to come together. And so I might use some information, maybe some facts or some logic, a bit of logical argument, some logos. So first of all, I might say that um, quite often, like you might talk about dinner time being a really important part of family time. It's where, you know, in our busy lives, it's where all um, the family members come together and um, it's a special time in that, re in that regards. You might say, well, I want to put some information there. And so I might talk about the reality TV uh, foodie shows. And then look at, you know, why is it that they are so popular? And, and what is it that they actually do? You know, what, what compels us to watch them? And, and what's the purpose? What, why do people like that? And how does that help us talk about connecting people? So we're starting to build that tree. While we're talking about that too, we might throw in a little anecdote, a little story. And we said this side ID one was going to be about the individual and personal sort of thing, uh, and the other side was going to be community. So with this anecdote, we could tell a little story about Christmas lunch and what, what, you know, what that looks like, and um, you could um, talk about all the wonderful food and smells and you know, the excitement and the bonbons and all that sort of stuff, and you know, talk about why that's important and build that in. We're sort of getting this idea here through the TV shows and the Christmas lunch. You're exploring what, what is it about um, cooking and food that connects people? Why is that so special? Um, and, and so that's building that thing. And what? Well, it's because it's a magnet. You can come around to that. So we're starting to get some ideas building off our first point. So really, if we divide it up, we'll have our introduction in the core here. Here would be our first you know, body of our speech, the first body paragraph, or the first half of the speech. And then the second point would be the second half of the speech, and then you'd have a little call to action or conclusion. So with our idea two then, um, coming off food is an important part of our life, so we're saying food is a vital part of our community. And then, um, so there are a few things that we can do there. So we could, we could appeal to people's emotions using pathos. And so we could so well, just because we uh, enjoy food and have that, shouldn't everybody have that opportunity? And from that idea, we can come down here and talk about something like the Central Coast Food Shelter. Okay? And so that's a place where... Um, you know, the underprivileged in the local community can come and have um, a, a meeting place. And it is about food, but it's about a lot more than that. So you could explore that and look at how it provides connection and, and you know, a sense of community for, for those people too. And that's really supporting the idea, your first idea, that food brings us together. 
then you can start talking about you know um, that that it's a, a you know volunteering is a, an act of community service and it's really important and it really ties our society together and then we come back to this idea of it being a magnet or a super glue or something like that okay I've left another spot there for other as well because there might be other things that we can we can think about so um, that that pretty much covers what we're looking for with the the visual planner lots of ideas there but they're presented in, in a way that's that's um, going to make your your speech flow and just notice that I haven't gone and cut and paste ideas from the internet I haven't gone and done any research I haven't got any statistics or um, I haven't got any um, you know chunks of information um, because it's a conversational sort of um, speech that we're delivering. It is totally okay if you want to put some statistics in there, but we don't want them to dominate your speech. We want the ideas to come forward, and, and it's the way in which you present those ideas. So like we're saying with the metaphor, that's a really, um, a really strong, sophisticated way of, of presenting your argument, um, much more so than just giving us lots of information. Now there's a funny word just as a bit of trivia. Um, it's called a conceit. In poetry is generally where it occurs. This is just random, but when you're developing a metaphor, um, a conceit, what um, poets sometimes do is they take two things and compare them, but here we've got food is like a magnet, okay, and we can see that, but what you could do is you could take, with a conceit, is take two things that seem to have no relation whatsoever and you put them together and then you through your speech would prove why they work. So you might say that food is like a mountain and then you've got to have some way of sort of connecting them. And it, it might be something to do that, that there's a lot of hard work involved and it takes a lot of planning and all that sort of stuff and, but when you get to the top of the mountain the views are spectacular and it's all well worth it. So um, that's, that's um, just a little bit of an extension of, of the metaphor but it's those things that show that you're a real thinker and that you're creative and that's what we really want to see. Finally, let's talk about the language features, the rhetorical devices, the persuasive devices that you could use. There are a whole range of things that you can factor into your speech. So when you've got your visual organiser and you've got all your points and you say, oh, here I'm going to use some repetition. Oh, over here I'm going to use a rhetorical question. Um, and so you've got your planner and then you can start looking at using a variety of these. You don't have to use them all and certainly there are a lot more that I haven't placed on the board as well. But this gives you a bit of an idea. We know about persuasive devices. You would have done a lot of that in, in uh, your previous schooling years. Um, rhetorical devices and language features or rhetoric is the art of speaking so there are things that you can do to, um, to enhance your um, impact on, on the audience. So one of them might be using a rhetorical question, for example, um, as a means, or using an anecdote. Uh, they're, they're good examples of rhetorical devices, using logos, pathos, and ethos, those type of things. So we've got, you can use repetition, anecdote, we talked about that. Inclusion, so you might include the opposite argument and say, some people might argue that food simply uh, is there to make us feel less hungry. But I know that this is wrong. And then you, you include the opposite argument as a way of strengthening your argument. It's a great debating technique. You could use a famous quote or a saying or a line from a song or any of those sort of things and work that in. You know, so um, such and such said and, and then explore that and use it either to prove your case or to... To, um, to argue against. Okay, we've got metaphor, we used that before too. Um, you could place a simile in there. If you've already developed a metaphor, why not use a simile? Um, some alliteration. Um, it's a good um, persuasive device sometimes when you want to draw attention to something. Um, you know, you can make it a bit catchy in, in places. You could use an illusion. So I've got two examples here. You could have a mythical illusion. You can say, oh, I want to know who is the god of food. Oh, Dionysus um, is the god of food and wine. So I could go and do a little bit of research on that and see if I can integrate an idea from that into my argument. 
you know, so you're talking about food connecting people. So even in Greek mythology, Dionysus, that was, that was Dionysus' job. Um, and that's a nice thing to do. You might refer to some of the stories that you know. So you know, what about the, um, the lunches that occur in Harry Potter? You know, and so you could, you could talk about um, what food means in the stories of the books that you've read. So they're nice little things to do as well. You can certainly use statistics, um, exaggeration. There's a whole broad range of things that you can do. And it's just a matter of, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to carefully show a variety. So you've got your visual planner, and then you're able to say, oh, at this point it would be really good for me to use a rhetorical question, uh, and I might talk about Harry Potter down here. And, and that's really going to bring the, the, um, the essence of your speech. It's going to take it from here and, and really make it excellent. So good luck with that. Uh, we've got lots of planning to do. Uh, and, and, you know, once we've started drafting, you're going to find that you'll write and then you'll say, oh, I need to move this over here. And it's not just a case of one simple draft and then, and then putting it onto palm cards. It's, it takes a little while to do that. You'll write some script and say, oh, I've still got another 30 seconds to go, or, oh, I've gone way too long. You know, so you've got to keep those sort of things in mind too. But hopefully, with all this information now, you'll be really well equipped to write your speech.